Okay, great. Well, I am here with my friend, longtime client, Kelly, um, to talk a little bit about your experience participating in the grief ritual. Um, you've done, I think, two now. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, and we have one coming up soon. So I just thought it'd be really uh, helpful to have someone who's been through it, especially someone who's been through it more than once, share mm -hmm. a little bit about uh, that experience. So um, thank you so much, Kelly, for having this conversation. Yeah. Thanks for asking me. Yeah. So maybe you could give just a brief introduction about yourself. Um, what sure. you in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the, I guess the things that we normally talk about, I'm a mom, I'm a teacher. Um, I'm in my 17th year of teaching. Wow. Um, yeah. Bless and <laughs> yeah. And I consider myself um, an activist, um, very politically involved. I am a Libra. So there's that whole, you know, justice thing. Totally. Um, and definitely um, a spiritual seeker. I haven't really belonged to any organized religion, especially growing up, but um, but I am a part of like unity and some other new thought traditions as well as pagan stuff. I'm just kind of a spiritual seeker, I guess you could say. Um, I'm a social introvert. <laughs> uh, I know that about you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I definitely appreciate my alone time. Um, yeah, I have two birds and a dog. So if you hear them in the background, that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much great. It. Yeah. Um, I learned some things. That's great. So <laughs> I know, I mean, you've been in a lot of different programs and offerings with me. Um, mm -hmm. And the, I know at least the first grief ritual was a part of a bigger program that you were in the same right. um, yes. So it was kind of like already on the menu of things you were doing. Maybe it wasn't like you were seeking that piece out in particular. Um, but if you, can think back to either that one or even the more recent one, like what, was there anything you were dealing with or anything that was up in your life um, that made it seem like that drew you to that practice um, mm -hmm. or that prompted you to pursue that grief work? And mm -hmm. what were you hoping for? What were you imagining? What were you expecting? Yeah. Um, so the first time um, it was a part of like that bigger group and everything, but I have, uh, experienced grief since my dad passed when I was 12. And that's obviously a, a more obvious, like major grief. Um, and then I've just kind of <laughs> dealt with it or not dealt with it ever since, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so when that, was offered the first time uh, I was actually like, wow, this is amazing because you had spoken to the fact that, you know, grief in general is not, um, welcomed or very acceptable to even talk about. Um, it's awkward. I feel like for a lot of people, um, both for themselves, but in interacting with others who are going through it for whatever reason. And you had said that, you know, in the past that there were rituals and things set in place that allowed people to regularly process and experience their grief. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, considered healthy and like normal part of life. Um, and I don't feel like it's considered that now. And so the fact that you were introducing something that could become you know, a several times a year thing and that introduced practices that I could do myself mm. to process it weekly, monthly, whatever I needed daily, um, was really intriguing to me, um, and sounded really healing. And so that's initially, you know, what I felt about it. And then between the first experience and the second, 
um, just from my own experience, as well as like experiencing what others um, shared uh, and experienced at those circles, I've learned to like kind of redefine what grief is. It's not always those big griefs of, you know, death or divorce or loss of a job or those kind of things. It can also just be you know, daily little things that, that change or that you, um, feel like you're growing and changing and, but you can still grieve that part of you that's let it, you know, that you're letting go yeah. or transitioning away from. And so it's been really eye opening in terms of, um, looking at grief in all those ways. And I also wanted a way, because I think for me, grief has been very like stuffed down and been um just like a physical weight is the only way I could describe it and so the body and embodiment work that you do I also wanted a way to claim that and honor it and recognize it but also allow it to release in whatever you know, whether that was going to happen like instantly or it happens over time or however that looked, I just wanted a way to, um, release it from my body, you know, that energy that I was holding. So, and what I expected or what I was hoping for was, like I said, just that release physically. Um, and then also to be in connection with others around it, like, Mm -hmm we could share with those around us, but even just allowing myself to express it in community felt really healing too. It felt really vulnerable and all of those things, you know, awkward and all those things too, but it's just because it's just not a part of our culture, you know? Um, But once you get past, once I got got past that vulnerability awkwardness part, then it just became about um, feeling really, held and supported and like making it kind of sacred, you know, to like have this experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a very safe space, you know, between knowing the people there and even not knowing them, but just the energy that you create and making it a safe space and giving all these alternatives for participating, not participating, participating, you know, in this way where you vocalize or you just come forward and you're silent. Like there's so many options, you know, that no matter what you choose, you feel supported and you feel safe. And like, you can still be a part of the process in the way that works for you, which I definitely appreciate because it took me a long time to kind of acclimate to doing these kinds of things in, in circle and in community. Um, and so I could take as long as I needed to feel comfortable to participate, you know, vocally or all those ways that I would get nervous about, you know, I could take my time, um, approaching those and, and participating that way. Yeah. That's awesome. That is it's definitely one of my hopes in like how I design the space. So I'm glad to hear that's been your yeah. experience. Well, you kind of started to get into that, but I'm wondering if there's anything more you would say about like what what has been your experience? Um mm-hmm. what 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 are your takeaways? Like mm-hmm. yeah, what worked for you in those spaces? Yeah. Um, well, I'll kind of speak to that for both times. So the first time. I remember having uh, a lot of grief around um, my first group of fifth grade students that I was and still very connected to. Um, And it was the first time I had taught fifth grade and it was different for me because they go on to middle school. I don't get to see them. Mm -hmm. So that grief was very present. And then there was also, I believe, kind of a transition in my relationship with my partner that was like a a good healthy transition, but there was still some grief around it. Um, And so I just remember, um, I like you have the part where you can choose to um, have people come and like, just put their hand on your shoulder or um, your back, or you can choose to, you know, do it by yourself. Yeah. 
without the touch. And I chose the touch, which was a push for me, but I just felt called to do it mm -hmm. um, and safe to do it. And I just remember immediately when I went up there and I just like the sobbing, it just all came forth. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really expecting that, but I was okay with it. It felt a little vulnerable, but it, you know, like I just sit with the vulnerability and process it and let it out. And I was able to put words to it and express it. And I just remember leaving, um, feeling like that what I was grieving was acknowledged, not just by me, but by spirit and by the circle there in the community. And it just felt like this big release that felt really good and also exhausting because I think I went home and took a nap. Yeah. Um, and then the second time, this last time, um, I didn't really come expecting anything. I just wanted to experience being in my body. Like I really got in tune this last time with the embodiment piece and connecting with the earth when we went and walked around in the forest and the open area. And I just felt really like I needed that grounding and just that being in my body fully because that's not something that I feel like comes naturally to me day to day. I'm very much more in my head. I've grown a lot. Um, so it's not like what it used to be, but, and I remember I thought I was going to have grief come up around my son turning 15 and just like all the feelings around that. Um, but actually what m was more present was I had this experience at the winter solstice retreat where I had like this connection with my dad who's passed and it was really amazing and it transformed me and shifted a ton of things in me and it transformed like what I do in my daily life, mm. spiritually, especially, mm. um, but also like self-care and physical stuff for myself too. And like every, you know, most everything that was starting to like change and shift. And I was experiencing grief around that because it felt mm. like, oh, it's, you know, going to fade away. Mm. But what I got out of the the grief circle that day was that it's just shifting that, you know, that that connection is still there. It's just showing up in a different way mm. and that it, there's not really a loss and to just trust. Like I made this um, picture with a tree and the word trust uh, while there that day when we did the like art expressive part on the mandala and um and that's what i got was to just kind of trust the process and then it didn't mean it was like either all the way there or all the way gone yeah. like and have very black and white thinking right. so i felt the word that comes to mind is relief i felt relief that it was like oh okay this is just you know a change a shift but it's not like a loss it's not gone you yeah. know yeah. And just, to be, and just to be open to that. Yeah. And then, and then I just felt really grounded, like between, like I said, walking out in nature and then the grounding meditation that you did, um, and just moving my body and being with my body and very present. So that's what I got, got out of it this time. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and this. also yeah. I was going to say this time too, there was someone who shared, I won't go into particulars, but just shared, like listed all these different griefs. And that was one of the shifts that happened for me was like, oh, grief doesn't have to be this like big, huge traumatic event. It's all these other little things too, that I can name and recognize and allow, you know, yeah, to be in process through as well. Yeah. That's cool. I, I knew some of those things, but it's really cool to hear just in more detail and also kind of retrospectively. Um, yeah. I, I, a question that's coming up that I, I didn't give it in, in your list, but um, I'm, I'm curious if like, cause you, you said a few things about um, like how you felt like grief, like a heavy weight in your body 
Mm -hmm. and you know named a couple of the things that were like big changes um you know with your son or your partner or your cl mm -hmm. your class in leading up to the rituals mm -hmm. or, or prior to the rituals were, were you aware of those things as like oh I'm having grief about that I should probably do something about it or or oh I can feel this grief in my body I like I, I need some body practice or was it uh -huh. or vague or non-specific, you know, cause I'm thinking of people like, a, like maybe who's never done a certain, like mm -hmm. a grief work before, like how mm -hmm. would they know that they, this might be for them? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I've kind of been with grief most of my life. I feel like, right. yeah. Um, so you had an awareness of some of those big griefs. Yeah. yeah. I, I have, I mean, I've done a lot of work around the passing of both of my parents and everything, which is where the majority of my grief stems from or the core of it or whatever. Um, but I, I don't think the first time going into it that I was aware um, of the grief around my students like that uh, definitely surprised me um, that definitely came up in the moment and I knew I knew about the grief like around the transition with my partner and then I because I knew and was familiar with the process I had a couple things come to mind before the second one too Mm -hmm. but also in the second one and I think it's just because between the first one and then what happened at the winter solstice retreat and then kind of the daily practices that I've incorporated since December of last year um the grief was there but it didn't feel as heavy or as intense as yeah. you know the first experience the first circle yeah um, but I also think, which you, you know, talk about that you don't have to have any feeling of grief to want to go to this. You also may end up processing like things around like intense joy or, um, you know, openness or like positive transformations that are happening. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be directly around grief and it may not occur every time you attend you know one of these circles right may, that may not be what is up you know right. um I just think for me I have so much built up like residual stuff that the heaviness that I feel is more around just decades of that build up yeah. you know That's and now having a way even though I've done like talk therapy and other things around grief, it's not the same as what this process is. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just been um, way more of a physical on the energy level, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, kind of release, like the energy that it holds in my body and yeah. having that like slowly be, um, released and just addressed and recognized yeah. by me mm -hmm. yeah that's cool um so kind of related to that like who what would you tell someone who was considering this who do you think this this could be for well I mean for me it's for almost everyone I know I don't know if it's just me or just the state of the our culture in the world but almost everyone I know is going through some pretty intense loss or change or um just hardship of some kind yeah. not there in their whole life entirely but just in an area yeah. and so for me, just anyone that's experiencing that, this is an opportunity to get in touch with it in at a pace and a level that feels comfortable for you. 
-hmm. It does not mean that you have to go there and like scream and cry. I mean, you can and thrash (laughs) out on the floor or whatever, but for most people, like I said, grief and doing that, especially around others is awkward and uncomfortable. So this provides a way to get in touch with that and you can keep it as private through the experience as you want. You know, you can journal about it. You can just stay internal. You don't have to speak out anything. So for me, it's anybody who wants to just start to get in touch with that without feeling like they're going to be entirely like overwhelmed and drowning in it. Yeah. Um, and it gives tools that you can choose to then use yourself. Um, even if you never came back to another, you know, grief circle, you could walk away with some, some ways that you can continue the process just for yourself privately. If you find, you know, that you're not ready for that community yet. And I think that's another benefit of having you do it on zoom too, because people can create that safe space that way for themselves totally. experience it, you know? Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, being in person has, it's, it's so lovely in its own way. And like, I found that the ritual can be really powerful virtually. And yeah, it, it does have that level of like, being able to really choose your own boundaries with it, like choose your own visibility. Um, So I think that's definitely a, a perk to that format. That's just why I like it for both. Yeah. (laughs) So I think it's for anyone who just wants to get a feel for what it could be like to get in touch with that part of themselves and, and start, you know, that healing process. Yeah. Um, like I said, without having to be any more vulnerable than they want to be. Yeah. Maybe on that note, like, is there, you, you mentioned a couple pieces of the ritual that maybe felt like a little edge for you. Um, Mm -hmm. is there anything that would have felt like a barrier or what, what felt like, was there anything you kind of had to overcome to be like, yes, I can participate in this? As far as the circle itself, no, because I knew if I wanted to, I could go there and just sit in my chair or sit on the floor and that, and do absolutely nothing. And that would be it. And (laughs) And still could benefit from the process and do my own internal thing. Yeah. Um, so if I didn't want to speak or if I didn't want to approach the circle, if I didn't want to do any of it, I didn't have to. And I knew that, and you always create that space every single time. Um, which is amazing for me more the barrier is um sometimes the the timing of it because you know my life is fairly full not as full as it used to be but it's fairly full and and the biggest barrier for me is also and it's partly because I just don't make it enough of a priority which I'm working on is the money part of it which I think is a common barrier but I just know that whether it means I have to pay on the lower end of the sliding scale or, you know, if there's a payment arrangement op- option or whatever, or just now that I know that it's that important to me, you know, making it a priority to set money aside so that when it comes up, it I have it and it's yeah. easy for me to do, you know? Um but yeah, the, the money part has just always been the biggest barrier, but I also trust, and I've been able to do pretty much every time what I've wanted to participate in. So, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so there's ways around that, you know? Yeah. And again, money is another thing that's really awkward for a lot of people to talk about, and I'm very open about it. And if I've ever needed to ask or discuss anything with you in that way, you've always been really open. And I've always been like, if it's not something that is viable or she can do, she'll say so. And then Mm -hmm. that'll be okay. And I'll just have to make the next one or whatever, you know? But like I said, we've always worked it out and I've been able to go, so. I know that's been so great. I've really appreciated the the ability to be transparent, you know, Mm -hmm. back and forth about that. Yeah, because I also, the other thing about it is that I also want to pay you what you're worth and that I know you know the work that goes into it is a lot in a lot of different ways 
And so I want to be able to honor that. And, you know, if that means that I have to do payments to get, you know, to that level to pay you what you're worth and the, and the, you know, whatever ritual I'm doing, what it's worth, then I want to do that. So. Yeah. Thank you. I've always felt your integrity with that. So I, mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you would want folks to know about this or anything else you want to say? I mean, I've kind of already said it, but I just, um, I just think that if you know that there's this grief and this healing and however it shows up for you, whether it's physically, emotionally, mentally, or all of the above, and you're wanting a way to connect with that and start to heal that, whatever that means to you, that this is just a really um, inviting and open way and safe space to, to do that. And it's very different from, you know, I mean, I love counseling and stuff, but it's just very different because it's so um, individualized and it incorporates so many different pieces, you know, the creative, the physical, the spiritual, the mental through the guided meditations, like all, it just incorporates so much and it's worth checking out at least once. And if it's not for you, you'll know. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, yeah. It's always such a joy to have you a part of things. And yeah, I always learned, learn so much from hearing people's experience. Cause I, you know, I can describe what I think is happening, but I, I've never experienced right. me. <laughs> so it really, it really helps a lot. So I hope um, awesome. your, this testimony can just shine some light for folks in the future listening. I hope um, so. Yeah. So I appreciate it a lot. Yeah. Thank you again for asking me. And I hope, um, yeah, like you said, that it's helpful and clarifies things for people who might be thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay.